Hey, I just thought I'd share this uh, quick tick tip with all you technology teachers out there, or even people who just want to have their kids play with something different. Um, I went out on the web and found a designer who designs um, these patterns for Star Wars snowflakes. He also has Harry Potter and some Marvel and some Disney Frozen. So any flavor you know of interest. And so usually what you do with his designs is you take them from paper and you fold them up in a certain way and you cut them out and you get a snowflake. Uh, this one, the Mandalorian, or, you know, like this one, the child. Or I know it has a name. I can't remember it. Haven't seen that episode yet. It's only been a week. Uh, I haven't caught up. So that's the traditional way of doing it. Okay, so here I'm at the website of AnthonyHerreraDesigns.com, also the creator of Star Wars Snowflakes. Um, I'm promising how to turn one of his designs, as you can see on this page here, into a CAD design for your students to be able to 3D print, cut on the laser, vinyl cutter, etc. So how do we go about doing this? Well, he's got a great number of uh, different designs. You can see they go back to 2012. He also has Frozen, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Harry Potter. You can see his work on his Etsy store here. Um, I have no affiliation with him. I don't uh, make any money off of this. I just like his work. And so I'm going to go ahead and work on how to turn one of these designs into a um, CAD design using Onshape, as a lot of teachers are using Onshape as we've shifted to distance learning this year. So how we go about doing that? Well, first we're going to have to pick a design. And so, in the interest of time, I'm going to go back a ways here and see what he did originally, 2012. What are some of the classic kind of Star Wars designs? I see 3PO, I see Obi-Wan, I see a Rebel Pilot, R2-D2. Some of these are super detailed and not exactly uh, conducive to a quick tutorial. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'll grab something here. Oh, let's take a look at C-3PO. So C-3PO, fairly simple, a lot of arcs, semicircles. Oh, this one might be a little challenging, but we'll go ahead and give it a rip. Okay, so I found the design. I find what I like, C-3PO in PDF. Okay, so that's going to download the PDF form of this file. You can see it's just one of the wedges to my computer. It's a PDF. I hit download, and I save it. Okay, and there's that. All right, and it pulls it up in my, you know, Acrobat viewer, just like it would if it were on a page. And if I went to, you know, view full, this is what it's going to be like in full screen, full page kind of design. Great, grand, good. Moving on, closing that. All right, so back to my browser. Um, so now I have that in PDF form, which is great if I want to print it and cut it out on paper and make a paper snowflake, but I don't. So I need something that I can take the PDF form and change it into a different format that I could pull into Onshape. And how I'm going to do that is going to be this lovely website called ilovepdf.com. And if you look here, all these tools are free. Uh, they do have a login. You can have an account and all that, but you don't have to. And if you go PDF to JPEG and you select a PDF file from my downloads, all right, and then it's right there. It shows what it looks like, and I say I want to convert that to JPG, and so I do, and then I download the JPG. Okay, so my JPEG is in its download form. Great, grand, moving on. Now I can do something with it. So I am opening up my Onshape account. I don't have anything going right now. You can see some past work and some examples, and if you look close, you'll even see my final exam for the freshman. Um, but let's see here. Let's create something. Or actually, we have to import first. We're going to import that JPG file into Onshape's format, and it's going to go ahead and create the JPG file. Okay. So then I want to create a document. And I'll call this one C3PO because I lack imagination. 
Now, all right, so on one of my planes, I'm going to want to draw this. So I'm probably going to need to create a sketch on the top plane. I'll just pick the top plane for just because. All right, and now I have this sketch here. And what I need to do in the sketch is to import an image or insert an image. And so go back to my other documents that I I put in, so go to my on shape, and there it is, my C3PO snowflake document. And then I gotta draw a rectangle somewhere. I'm gonna grab the origin just for fun and stretch this out. Okay. Um, I didn't try and change the proportions of it at all. I didn't uh, mess with dimensions. Um, we can do that here if I go from top to bottom. If this were a sheet of paper, it would of course be 11 inches, which you know makes it a little easier to trace as well. So now that I have it in on shape and in the proper size, right, proportion and all, uh, I'm just going to use the sketch tools to lay a sketch on top of this background image. And so I'm going to use tools like three point arc and I'm just going to do the wedge that I need, not the whole circle. So the wedge I need is approximately there and there. And hopefully if you're being careful, you'll be much neater about this than I will. And then I'll go to the center of the pie here, following the lines as best I can and then close that shape. Now doing this, I want to cut out all the gray. That's my goal. All right, so at this point, I'm going to speed up the CAD process, click, 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 and I'm not really doing it this fast. I sped up the video. The only person I know who CADs this fast in real life is Jim Hansen, fellow sim master teacher and all around great guy. create a mirroring line so I'm going to use the line tool and up uh, the trackpad oops and I'm going to create this line that goes right down the center and I'm going to make it a construction line so I can use it for mirroring make that a construction line and I'm in business ah. okay so I've got my lines I've got my shapes and I've got this dividing line here the tool I want to use now is going to be the mirror tool. So I'm going to turn on mirror and it says to select all the entities I want to mirror. Well, I want to mirror everything. Okay. And look at that. I get two C3POs. And so that's a good hit enter. Okay. And now I want to take that same thing and I want to make it go all the way around. And so what I'm going to do now is the circular pattern tool. And so I'm going to go to my pattern tools and I'm going to pick circular and I'm going to select everything I want to pattern and I'm going to tell it I want it to be six of them and I want it to pattern around ooh, 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 this origin, All right? So I want those all to link up there. And now I have a nice pattern ready to extrude. So, okay, so now I have my pattern ready to extrude. Let's see if we'll try this again. And what I need to do now, I'll select the sketch and I'll hit the extrude tool. And it's gonna say, what do you want to extrude? And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna say, I want this face and this face this half a face, and this half a face, this half a face, this half a face. You get the idea. And so I just want C3PO. I don't want anything else. I don't want anything in the background. I don't want my sketch. I just want his face. And I'm going to make the depth 0.125 inches, which is a reasonable thickness for just about anything you're going to 3D print. 
or cut on the laser or whatever for this kind of pattern. And I'm going to hit go and you can see I have a snowflake now of C-3PO's face. What can I do with this? I could turn this into an ornament on the laser cutter, I could turn this into 3D prints, I could turn this into all kinds of things, vinyl cutter, you name it. Um, just a cool little play around thing to do um, with your class. So, so just a little information about me. Uh, this is my 18th year as a technology teacher. I've been doing this in a few different states and a few different formats. I am teaching from home right now due to COVID and I've taught online before, so this is not completely new to me. Uh, I am a, also a PLTW master teacher for computer integrated manufacturing, and I've been doing PLTW classes for, I think, seven years now. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments or reach out to me. Uh, I'm out there. I'm in PLTW groups on Facebook and other locations, and maybe I'll create some more videos in the future if this one has a positive response.